Hi and welcome to PJ Maybe's YouTube channel. Today we're looking at uh, my vampire tribal deck. No tokens, all vampires. I know uh, the Rune Sage is a commander and at the beginning of your upkeep each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. This I'm expecting to come in handy at times, so let's start. Only the other legendary creature in the deck is Daria Liberator of Malakir. It's flying first strike and whenever it enters, it deals combat damage to a player, I put a plus one plus one counter on each creature. So expect it to boost my whole deck. We have got my only Planeswalker, Sorin Vampire Lord. Comes in with four loyalty counters for a plus one. Up to one target creature gets a plus two plus zero until the end of turn. A wee bit extra damage. Minus two. Deals four damage and to any target and you gain four life. And its maximum is a minus eight until the end of turn each vampire you control gains. Tap and gain control of target creature. Don't expect to ever get to the, the ultimate but the minus two is what I expect to use. So here goes. Standard creatures. To go with the vampire lord you've got Soren's Guide. When you enter the battlefield, you can search your graveyard or your library for Soren and just basically give me a chance to get him if he's not in my hand. Next one is a card draw. Champion of Dusk. When you enter the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the number of vampires you control. Not ideal if you've got a whole deck full of vampires, but it's card draw nonetheless. Dusk Legion Zealot. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. Card draw. Malachir Soothsayer. It's got Cohort and you tap it. You tap an untapped ally card, you control and draw a card and lose a life. Card draw. Oathsworn Vampire. It enters tapped. And you can cast it from your graveyard if you've gained life. I expect to gain life every turn, so I can keep recasting it if I've got nothing in my hand. Narcana, Assassin. Whenever you gain life, it gains death touch until the end of turn. Just a wee boost whenever I gain life, which I expect to do a lot. Calastria's Night Watch. Whenever you gain life, it gains flying until the end of turn. A better way of doing damage. Child of Night. It's a standard attacker, blocker, whatever, but it's got lifelink. Vampire Nighthawk. It's flying, death, touch, and lifelink. Nothing else special except those, and those will be quite handy. Blood Burglar. As long as it's my turn, it gets lifelink. Just a good attacker. Sadistic Sky Marcher. As an additional cost to cast it, you reveal a vampire card from your hand or pay one. It's got flying and lifelink. I expect to have the vampire, so I don't expect to have to pay over the odds for this one. Vampire of the Dire Moon. It's a death touch and lifelink. Same idea. Another one, Vampire Champion. It's got death touch. For four, it's a 3-3. Three, three. So, ideal. Markov's Crusader. It's got lifelink and it has haste as long as I control another vampire. Expecting to, so I'm okay with that one. Singer Vampire. It's got flying, and whenever a creature is dealt damage by it and dies, I put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Ideal for blocking all the small attacking creatures. Kill them and boost. Bloodborne Vampire. Whenever you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it can grow quite well under this deck. Savage Gorger. 
It's got flying and at the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Same idea. I expect to do damage one way or the other and I expect it to grow. Green's Agent. It's got lifelink and when it enters a battlefield, it explores land or a plus one. I'm okay with either. Ferocious Vampire. It's got menace and when it enters a battlefield, Target Vampire, you control gets a plus one, plus one and gains menace until the end of turn. Allows to do a wee bit extra damage and a wee boost. Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Ideal for a, gain, a life gain deck. It's got flying and you put a plus one, plus one on it. Anytime you gain life. Ghoul Draz Overseer. It's got flying and landfall. So whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control you get a plus one plus zero and till the end of turn if it's a land the, the creatures not just single creature creatures you control get a plus two plus two until the end of turn so it's allowed boost every time i play land and if i'm constant land drop should be fine it is a six mana so it's later on in the game indulgent aristocrat it's got lifelink and for two you can sacrifice a creature and put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. Ideal. It basically allows you to actually boost a lot of your vampires just for one of the smaller ones. Thirsting Bloodlord. Other vampires you control get a plus one plus one. What can I say? A vampire deck with something gives everything a plus one plus one? Perfect. Malakir's Cull Blade. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, I put a plus one, plus one on it. Ideal for four player game. You don't need to be doing the damage for it to get actually the pluses. So perfect. Anointed Deacon. At the beginning of your combat, in your turn, you may have a target vampire get a plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. It allows you to give one of your, your other creatures a boost. Perfect. Vampire Envoy. It's got flying and whenever it becomes tapped, you gain a life. Perfect for anything it needs to tap a, an ally creature. You just tap that one, gain a life and boost. Defiant Bloodlord. It's got flying and whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Ideal if you can gain a lot of life that turn you can actually do a lot of damage sending a lot of lifelink or doing the soaring can do a lot of damage to an opponent sky march bloodletter it's got flying and when it enters the battlefield target opponent loses one life and you gain one life ideal for a lot of the deck which actually gets boosts for any life you gain or any life your opponent lose Kretz, Bloodsucker. Whenever a creature you control, toughness 4 or greater dies, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2. And for 3, you can sacrifice another creature and put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So, same idea. Not I'm expecting a lot of my creatures to have the buffs to get above the 4 before they croak. But same idea. Does damage, gives me life. Rabid Bloodsucker. It's got flying and whenever it enters the battlefield each player loses two life. Same idea, damage to my opponents. Vicious Conquistador. Whenever it attacks each opponent loses one life. These are all designed to do damage to each of my opponents or specific opponents. When the Bishop, uh, this is Bishop of Bloodstained, whenever it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. Ideal for later on in the game when you've got a lot out. Vampire Sovereign. 
It's got flying, and whenever it enters a battlefield, target opponent loses three life and you gain three. Same idea, damage to your opponent and life gain, which will help boost your army. Calastria's healer. It's got rally. Whenever it or another ally enters under your control, each opponent loses life and you gain life. So, ideal, perfect. Epicure of Blood. Basically, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Ideal. Damage and life gain. Perfect. Vampire Neoit. Each um to tap for two, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Perfect at the beginning of your step to actually boost everything. Vampire Opportunist. For 7 mana, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Same idea, it's just to actually help you later on in the game. Last creature, Vindictive Vampire. Whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent and you gain 1 life. Ideal, especially if I have somebody board wipes, you get the damage done. So, ideal, perfect. We'll now look at our artefacts. Start off with your standard artefact, Soul Ring. What commander never likes to play Soul Ring? Elixir of Immortality. It costs mm -hmm. one. For two, you can gain five life and shuffle Elixir of Immortality into your graveyard and your graveyard into your library. It allows you to actually put a lot of your big creatures back into your library if you get a board white or something you want them back. Fountain of Renewal. This is actually just to actually help with a lot of my buffs to my creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life. You can sacrifice it and do card draw, but it's there to give the life for any of my creatures that actually need it. The Ozolith. It's a legendary artifact. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it has counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith and at the beginning of combat on your turn, if Ozolith has counters on it, you may choose um, move all counters from Ozolith to a target creature. Ideal if you've got a lot of creatures with plus one, plus one, they die. Put all the plus ones on that and then you can put them onto another creature whenever it's attacking. A nice buff. Staff of the Death, Dead, Death Magus. Whenever you cast a black spell... Or a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. Same idea, boosting my life gain creatures. Luxor River Shrine. For one, you gain one life and put a brick counter on Luxor. And to tap it, you gain two life, activate this ability only if there's three or more brick counters on it. So, first couple of turns, put a... Uh, Playing one mana, put a brick counter on it. After that, third turn, you can keep tapping it, gain life just prior to combat. Now we'll look at the sorcery. Ligature of Blood. Destroy target creature and add three mana to your mana pool. Ideal. Arterial Flow. Each opponent discards two cards and for each... Uh, if you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. I expect to have a lot of vampires, so I expect that one to do well. Gruesome Fate. Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. Later on in the game, could be ideal. Arms of the Vein. Target opponent loses three life and you gain three life. And it has got madness, although I'll never use a madness cost. Sovereign's Bite. Target player loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. Similar to Arms of the Vein, but cost less. Cost 1 less. 
Three his curse. Deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. Not ideal against larger creatures, but the gain two life ideal for boosting some of my vampires. And Soren's Thirst. Soren's Thirst deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. Same idea as life gain. Now to our instance. We have got destroy target non non artifact creature. That's go for the throat. Then you have got murder destroy target creature. Then we have hero's downfall destroy target creature or planeswalker. And we have Doomblade, destroy target non-black creature. That's my spell stun and it basically as you can see most of the instants are to do with getting rid of creatures. Now we'll go into the enchantments. I'll go an inheritance. At the beginning of your upkeep it deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. For this deck, hope to get it out fairly early. Allows me to actually just constantly boost. And for six mana it deals 4 damage to target opponent and you gain 4 life. Don't expect to use that too much, but the beginning, I, I getting 1 life and doing 1 damage should boost a lot of my deck. Revenge of the Ravens. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Same idea, I lose to boost, so... I've got boosts coming left and right with this deck with the life gain and damage. Then you've got Omen of the Dead. It's got flash. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And for three, you can sacrifice it and scry two. Return, uh, retreat oh, uh, to Hagra. It's got landfall. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you choose one. You can either choose target creature gets a plus one, plus zero and gains death touch until the end of turn or each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Can I you can guess what one I would choose. Unholy Indenture. It's an enchanted aura. Uh, enchant creature. Whenever an enchant creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. I expect to use that with my commander. Gives me a wee bit of... It takes the worry out if somebody constantly just wants to destroy it. Right, that's them all. Now we're looking at lands. I've only got two non-basic lands, which are Witch's Cottage and Mortuary Mire. Witch's Cottage is add a black and when it enters the battlefield it tapped unless you control three or more swamps so expect to play that later on and when it enters the battlefield untapped you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library gives me one of my creatures back and mortuary mire mortuary mire enters the battlefield tapped and When it does enter the battlefield, you may put creature card from your graveyard onto the top of your library. Same idea, just allows me to get one of my creatures back and it taps for black mana. That leaves me with my lands. All in all, I have got 35 swamps. So 37 lands all in all in this deck. Any advice, please let me know. Anything you think I should take out, anything you think I should be putting in, Please put in the comments. If you like it, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Things to increase my deck, things to do more damage. I'm always happy. So thank you very much for watching a, my second video. And I will hopefully do one a week from now on. So thank you.